I said it on the cassette, perigo, perigo, is forbidden to forbid. So that was the first sample in the world. Welcome to Discography, the podcast that gives Gen X music maniacs a chance to smell like teen spirit again by connecting with a brotherhood obsessed with rating the entire discography of every single artist and band that ever mattered. I'm your host, Dave Gebro, and with three new episodes each week, you're going to gain a comprehensive knowledge of an act's history and output in the time it takes to listen to one album. And in this episode of Discography, we'll be turning our spray cans on the first two classic records by Os Mutantes with very special guest Sergio Diaz, the main man behind the wheel of the aforementioned incredible band. In the next half hour or so, we'll learn about three aspects of that awe-inspiring debut record that were simply improvised right there on the spot. The Mudantas song that Sergio says features the very first sample in music history, and how many stars out of five Sergio gives his own debut. Last but not least, we're going to find out who his favorite Beatle was. Okay, first things first, you need to know just how seriously I take this craziness. Discography is heavily researched, and the music is always reassessed with fresh ears. We don't just cover albums. Uh-uh. We do a searingly honest deep dive analysis of all EPs, singles, comp tracks, relevant solo work, and sometimes bootlegs and live stuff. Every release is slapped with an objectively accurate star rating between 0 and 5 which allows us all the real reason we do this the tootsie pop reward at the center of the rock and roll lolly to come face to face with the true shape of an artist's overall arc be sure to follow along with us chronologically as we go the link to our legendary playlist is right there in the show notes coming up we've got jaw-dropping multi-parters with david pajo and john landis not to mention an impending 13-hour interview with two founding members of the association. So don't miss out. Open up your listening app right now and click follow and get ready to meet your new friends. They're all kicking it right now in our Facebook group, Discography Soldiers of Sound. That's the best way to find out what's coming up on the show, but there's a hell of a lot more. You get recaps of the day in music history, great artist and track recommendations, polls that put you in the driver's seat on guest and show topic decisions, access to a thriving creative hub if you're looking for your next collaborator, and much more. So make sure you don't miss out. You can find the link to the Discography Soldiers of Sound Facebook page right there in the show notes. One final note, you're going to hear Sergio profess his love for me, as well as a promise to continue the interview literally on a daily basis. And in classic What the Fuck Mutantas style, this was actually the very last time I spoke with him. Typically, I'd probably feel a little bit insulted, but to be blown off by this particular man... Well, that's truly an honor. With that in mind then, away we go with Sergio Diaz from Os Mutantes, psychedelicized political revolutionaries waving the Brazilian free-living flag, turned acid-fried prog progenitors who so very, very desperately just needed 28 years away to make sense of it all. It's funny, we've been talking for an hour 15 minutes and we haven't talked about a single song. And that's by design. Yes. But now, now we're going to be talking about an unending flurry of great creative works, starting with 1968 self-titled debut, Os Mutantes. Uh, it's received an enormous amount of critical acclaim around the world. It needs very little help from me. You know, Mojo put it at number 12 of the 50 most out there albums of all time. Rolling Stone, you know, who gives a shit about Rolling Stone? But still, number nine on the list of 100 greatest well, Brazilian albums of all time. After being number nine on their list, I, I, I care a lot about them. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Sometimes they get it right. But number nine of the greatest Brazilian albums of all time, uh, it belongs higher on that list, in my opinion. Uh, also, number 39 on Rolling Stone's top 40 stoner albums. There's not a single misstep on this whole record. Straight from the first song, 
<clears throat> if you have not heard uh, Panis, a circensis, written by Gilberto Gil and Quitano Veloso, but this is musically sort of a statement of intent. Because yeah, the, thing, the thing, for example, if you think, I mean, the power of Os Mutantes is, for example, Gil and Caetano, they wrote Panis et Circenses. They never recorded because it would be impossible to do overdo. I mean, to beat us. Jorge Ben, he did Mia Menina, is one of the, his greatest hits. He never recorded also. Really? Yes. I, that I didn't know. It, that song is beyond good. I mean, it's... Yes. And this, if you can, if you imagine that song, we met him on, on the studio and everything was an improvisation. Even the vocals, the ooh, ooh, ah, sure. and was in loco without rehearsal. Amazing. So I mean, really this is amazing. A, Pure manifestation of Mutantis playing with a genius as uh, George Bain. This record begins, and if you don't know what you're in for, uh, within two minutes, you're treated to a trumpet fanfare, ascending technicolor harmonies that build very confidently in intensity. Then very exciting sunshine pop melodies that burst out and explode like fireworks in the night sky, a flute solo, a quickening stroke inducing tempo wind up, the crash of breaking glass, even a fucking you, field recording no, jammed in at the end. No, so but it, there's it, something that, that you don't know and nobody knows. What? You know when when the blue Danube come, comes in the end of the song? Yes, yes. You know how that thing happened? No, I had no idea. We were playing, we finished the song, and I closed my Wawa. I put, put it back to ooh. The, there was a radio station close by, and the, the Blue Danube came through my Wawa, <laughs> and it manifests like in perfect quality. Yeah. And the great thing is that the engineers, they didn't stop the machines. <laughs> So are these the same, you know, old squares in lab coats that were wandering around Abbey Road or was had things progressed a little bit more in Brazil? No, no, they they were rat labs. Yeah, but they were great. But for, what I mean is for them, that thing that is so powerful, because then then in the end, we play the part of the dinner party, right? Mm -hmm. You say, oh, pass me the salad here and all this without that song underneath wouldn't be as half of strong i mean with the blue danube da, 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 da. you know it was like wow it, it was perfection i mean it was i think we were definitely blessed by the universe and we were picked up to be born together and to do everything that we did because so many things happen like this in our lives that that was it's, it's too much it seems like a lot of forethought went into compiling this record but it also there is a feeling that you guys are just progressing by the skin of your teeth you're not looking around you're not stopping to take it in or try to make sense of it you're creating in the moment it feels yes. it, and you're not questioning it yes for example the le premier bonheur du jour mm -hmm. We heard the Beatles putting like reverse tape hi hat. Right. We had no idea what the hell was that. So, but we wanted to put that sound. So the only thing that we could find that would sound a little bit like would be like a insecticide pump. Right. So that's what we used to do that. The opening several songs. I mean, the whole record is great. There's there's nothing that's not great on this record, but. Really, the first, the flurry of the first several songs is fucking dizzying. <laughs> Amina Menina is so good. Yes. Initially, that was, the, I could not believe how great that song was when I first heard it. And I think from the beginning, that's always been my favorite uh, from the record. It's well, just, you, can, you can see, for example, that we, we have like the, the verse and then we have the part B, right? A yeah. lua prateada se escondeu, 
And then in the second time that this happened, nobody knew what was going on. So we kept on the, the Mia Menina verse beat. And then Arnaldo just came, a lua prateada. So we whoop, jumped on the, the second, uh, on the B part. And so that shows how unprepared that song was done and how spontaneous it was. It feels like the definition of pure liberation. I think it's because after the verses, the way melodically that that chorus just keeps building and building and building, by the time you get to, uh, yeah, by the time we're there, I am floating on a cloud of ecstasy. That yeah, is but imagine that those two voices was improvisation, me and Rita. You're telling me you didn't work out any of those harmonies beforehand? No. It's amazing. For example, there's, there was a, there's a little piece which is like, do, 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 yeah, mm -hmm. which me and Rita did. It was like gift from the the gods. The next song, O, o Relogio? O Relogio. O Relogio. <clears throat> I remember clearly the very last time I did LSD uh, in a way that would make me actually go on an, a, a real trip was 1998. That night, mm -hmm. I, li I listened to this record, uh, you know, one of many, many times I've heard it. And I had a very connective experience with that song mainly because right out of college you know just like you i thought i'm a professional i know what i'm doing uh -huh. uh, i'm a filmmaker so i left school to make a movie and the movie was called jesus too and in the first line <laughs> great we'd love first, to see that the first line of the song i kept rewinding it over and over because i'm thinking is she saying jesus too uh, there's yes, of course is she saying jesus too the, the first line of that song, lyrically, <clears throat> she sang something like, Jesus, do, 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 no. do, do. She sings, o relógio parou. I mean, the watch stopped. Okay. The time stopped. The vibe on this song is so yes. amazing, so dark and mysterious. And then It is, because she says, uh, it doesn't matter if he's a Swiss or English, the watch, and he has like... 24 rubies and she describes the idea of of a, a watch but as a tempo you know i mean as time and the time st stand still well you guys certainly affect that over and over again it's an experience i always have with your music but you know you leave it up to just about any other band and they would leave it there in that mood of being dark and mysterious, but because it's the Mutantis, you get a strident march that kicks in from absolutely out of nowhere, but fits the song like a glove and is totally stunning. So yeah, that composition is entire Rita. Oh, is it really? Because it's it's actually credited to all you guys. Yes, we we decided to do like Roberto Carlos and Erasmo, they are or like John John and Paul. Mm -hmm. So whoever did the song, it was everybody's. For example, Rita Lee is mine, and uh, Virginia is mine, right. Technicolor is mine, Anume Desligado is mine, but it's all credited to Os Mutantes. Which is smart. That actually is, well, that really is a good way to keep a group together, but I think you had obviously a lot of other forces at play that made it impossible. But um, moving forward into the record, uh, Adeus Maria Fulo is now we're deep That's, in the jungle. Adeus Maria Fulo, it's a uh, how you call that? It's a classical of. Is the, that is that is that from your brother's guitar? That sound? No, no. <laughs> That's just uh, <laughs> the <laughs> the bell. I mean, somebody ringing the bell. Yeah, this one feels like you guys are you aren't musicians anymore you're explorers and and you're guiding us through the jungle um you know that's what adas maria fulo feels like to me yeah maria fulo was uh is it is a classical of the the old uh music spectrum of brazil from the northeast and so we we combined that thing with the calypso and i was playing for example 
a marimba. I never did play that thing before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it was, we were having a lot of fun. That's amazing. The marimba work on that is actually very, <laughs> I would never know that that's your first uh, foray into it. It, it feels like well, confident work on that. Well, if you think about it, it's just 30 notes in the entire world. So if you hit there, you might miss one or two, but <laughs> you ended up making some sense somehow. Look, you say that in a way that makes sense of what you did, but really what you did was you, you picked up an instrument that you had had no prior experience, and what you did was you created what was the perfect track for that song. And that's that you know that not a, yeah. not anyone can do that. Well, there was another another one which was fun uh, when we played uh, with Gilberto Gil. Uh, I mean, with Nana Kaimi, Bon Dia. I didn't know how to play, how to read chords, and so the maestro came and said, "Oh, it's, si it's simple. Don't worry. You see, A is La." B is C, C is Do, R is Re. So I just follow the thing and I learned right there on spots. Well, my hat's off to you. You did it pretty well, I'd have to say. So uh, after that, we have a song that is very intrinsic and incredibly important to the Tropicalia movement. Uh, what I get from it, from the song Baby, and what I get from all the different versions of Baby is... I get kind of like what I get when I hear the group, the band. So uh -huh. with the band, I'm trying to make sense of America. And the only way it makes sense is through the eyes of a bunch of Canadians. So uh -huh. baby feels like the same thing. I'm, this is, you know, all you guys and in your own different versions of the song, you're able to, set up a foundation of yearning for the states that's, at least that's what it feels like to me is wow. that is that fair or what does baby mean to you well baby it's i mean it's a it's a masterpiece from from caetano veloso agree and what do you what do you say i mean the lyrics are very important you know I sh the lyrics are very important i wouldn't know how to to translate them exactly well, Especially I mean, they, they seem like, f for me, as someone who doesn't speak Portuguese, but I'm always in tune with the words of this song when I hear it, because it feels like people who grew up thinking of the fantasy of America. And then as they've gotten older and their work has brought them into a whole other realm, it feels like... Well, they're the lyrics basically says is the guy telling this girl that which is baby you must take a look at the i think we have a a, a version in english right yeah on technicolor yeah you must take a look at the swimming pool or the gasolina yeah the the gasoline you know the great thing is that the lyrics flow according to the sound also the words they right. don't have to make sense well they're like it feels like snapshots of visions of yes America. caetano is a genius you know caetano is oh my god also the paul anka coda of diana oh yes is, is really really <laughs> i went the other day you know i'm living in vegas and uh, i w i went to l.a and I stopped in a Peggy Sue, and there was a, like a, pictures of everybody, Annette Funicello, you know, Frank Valley, and Anne Margaret, you know, all those, those people that we used to die for. I mean, put your hand on my shoulder. My God, yeah, this is perfection. I mean, we started, me and Arnaldo, before the bands, we started singing like Everly Brothers, you know, uh, Righteous Brothers, and because our, our vocals are, were, I mean, you know, brothers, they They're the best mix singer. so well. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So now on the second side of this record, we, I think it starts off with Senor F, which is your, your very first song. Yes. But then of course, you know, not, it's not enough to just have a great song. You, you need two fake endings and a double coda. I mean, you know, I'm guessing maybe. Yeah. 
a tip of the hat to Strawberry Fields, but but also beating them at their own game. Well, my mother is basically playing uh, the overture of the Greek concerto. And there was all the those uh, the horns that that Dupra did. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it, it was. How can I describe this thing? We just were having so much fun. It's not even a party. It's much more. It's a, I don't know how to describe. It's like magic. Discovering like uh, from from the shadow of Jesus Christ to the robes of Muhammad, the shield of arms of Ramses II, you know, or Ben-Hur. You know, yeah. the, the, all of this was mixed, and we, we mixed this without any, any effort or any misbehaving or anything like that, you know. Here, that was here's what I like. Just, what I like about the mixing is that you don't mix it so hard that it all coheres together. What I like is that you guys <clears throat> make it very clear that the influences are, they're sitting there and they're separate. Like you go, it's almost like changing TV stations. For example, yes. you know, the first song, you know, we, we go from the breaking glass to the blue Danube, to the building of the harmonies, to the solo, to, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kids. You know, it's like, who's it time, is. who the fuck has time to blend this stuff? Here's all the <laughs> stuff we love. You sort it uh, out, and we're going to move on to the next thing. Yes. My God. Hey, lads and ladies, Dave Gebro here. I abandoned my career and moved my family 3,000 miles to be able to focus exclusively on discography. And so if you're like me, and enough is just never enough, then please visit patreon.com slash discography and become one of our Patreon soldiers of sound. Discography is an entirely listener-supported show, and it's also intended to be a three times a week music deep dive experience. So do us both a favor and consider giving it a shot. Trust me, I'm working hard for the money, so hard for it, honey. There's the main show on Friday, a Monday wildcard episode, which is either a soul-bearing interview with that week's special guest, or an offshoot show like Queasy Listening and Rock Cousteau. And then on Wednesdays, there's the humdinger of them all, Discography's The Private Press with Paul Major. You got nothing to lose. If you don't dig it after a month, you're refunded no questions asked once again that's patreon.com slash discography and so then le premier bonheur du jour a le beautiful francois hardy cover uh yes. trem fantasma uh trem fantasma is a masterpiece I it's mean, great it's yeah mutantes and and caetano i remember like today writing that song i was actually at this indoor playground when i was writing notes for this my son was climbing all over the place and i was just furiously typing into my phone you know my main question is because you have these okay it starts off with these b buzz flutes that swarm over a martial drum rhythm that somehow introduces this soft psych tambourine propelled uh, sunshine harmony that explodes into a brass infused go-go breakout. I mean, I don't even know what the, I, I'm so enthralled by all the, <laughs> the disparate. I, you, know, you know what's the best thing? Don't put a title on it. Oh yeah. It is yeah. basically rock and roll. Totally. It's yeah. The, uh, yeah. It's the spirit of freedom that rock and roll always brought with it. Sexually, ideologically, politically, everything. The idea was basically to break in pieces and create something new. Amazingly, when you really look back at the most lasting work that an artist creates, there's probably no coherent way to memorialize the occasion because you're so in it. You're so ensconced in the act of creation that if I asked you the question, what in the hell was, what do you think? Was the guiding force pushing your hand across those notebook pages as you were writing this? 
I'd be willing to bet anything that you probably could not answer that. What is the invisible hand guiding the writing? Oh, of- I think the best way to describe this is it was meant to be. It really and, was. And of course, there was a interference of, mm-hmm. of the cosmos. What I can say is we were part at a moment of life that we had to reflect the images that people couldn't even see from the of themselves right so we were basically extremely good mirrors and we would basically be answering the questions that they even didn't know they were asking mm-hmm. and this yeah. is magic it is pure magic it sure is this is this album is a masterpiece and anyone who is interested in music to the extent that the listeners of our show are interested in music which is the eternal quest for a great album and then the feeling that that brings to you when you discover that record this is one in a line of those kinds of records where it blew my mind and never ceases to continue blowing it when i put it back on this one is a hard five stars between zero yes. and five, it's a five for me. How, what would you give this one from zero to five with all fractions being acceptable? I would say it's like 11. Yep, agreed. Okay, yeah. moving into 1969, Mutantis. The name of your band is so good, it had to be utilized a second time for an album title. So yes. this, to me, feels like the only record that is the tr- a true follow-up to the first one but it also yeah. introduces some of the, the progressive and funk elements. There's a, an amazing thing that happened in this album, or when we were playing uh, the Caminante Noturno. If you, know, if you look at the picture of the, the album cover, Great photo. Rita, is, Rita is holding a black thing. What is it? Do you, do you remember that? I don't, but I'm typing it in right now so I can see it. What is that it? thing? It's a cassette recorder. Okay. So that was the first sample in the world because no I sat, I sat on the cassette. Danger, danger, Will Robbins. Uh, you huh. know, in yeah. Portuguese, perigo, perigo is forbidden to forbid. You know, and. She, in the end, she just press play. This was a big deal for you guys because the record uses uh, a lot of found objects and samples from television and movies. You were making headway in that arena and there was nobody really doing that. Well, I think we're weird. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you're pretty weird too. Thank God. Uh, this record, it's worth keeping in mind that as opposed to the debut, which everyone loves, but the second record is mostly made up of material composed by you guys uh, on yes. your own. And I think mainly because of the, the increased focus on composition, the arrangements, they mostly seem a little bit less out there than on the first LP. There's still a lot of weirdness you know, that's around, but it's not as uh, holy shit like where i like i can't even get a firm stance here i can't even like stand still without being knocked sideways every five seconds uh-huh. uh, <clears throat> but uh, that being said the songs are fantastic uh don quixote kind of enters- yeah i mean don quixote is a, it's a absurdity for the time one thing i'm noticing is that there's a heavier feeling to it you know you yes guys, it's not a it, there's not as much of a of a light, buoyant sort of... No, you know, for for example, the beginning of Don Quixote is uh, the opera Aida in a minor key Uh with the, at the same time, with the theme of Ben-Hur because we went to the movies and we we loved the thing, so we decided to mix everything. Yeah, whatever's around. Yeah, and but I mean, those two things were specific. There's also a, a, a bunch of noises of people passing by, like right. in our head. There was a movie for this, you know. We we could hear like Ben Hur and, right. and the trumpets and 
and Aida at the same time, you know, and, and you know, all this guys passing by going like to the, the Coliseum or some shit like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. The lyrics of Don Quixote is like too much. It's, it's I mean, you have to be a very good in Portuguese to understand the, the connection of all the words mm-hmm. and the onomatopoeic. A vida é muito eu sonho com a minha do Sancho Quixote chupando chiclete. There's always the, all those shh, 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 shh. And this thing was like, nobody ever did that. Whoa. Hey, that sounded pretty cool too. You should sample that. Did the table just move? No, no, that was my voice. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, man, there's so many good songs on this record. How do you pronounce this? Now va se perder. Uh, Não va se perder por aí. Okay, that this song another... is, is written by Rafael. That guy that I told you was the, the main wheel on the beginning of everything. No, I mean, this is a great song. I love, it is. I love the sugariness of it, uh, especially coming before Dia 36 which it feels like you're swimming through molasses. Yeah, Dia 36 is like, it is a masterpiece. It is. And I mean, I believe I'm playing the drums on it. Are you really? Well, you, it's yeah. fantastic. And it's I mean, but if you hear the sound that the engineers did for the toms, that was a Fairchild and a LA 2A mm-hmm. compressors, one after the other. That's why I gave that the Whoosh. It was amazing. Do you have a... Actually, I'm not going to ask you quite yet. Uh, I'll wait till later. I'm curious about, you know, the albums that, that are closest to your heart that you guys have done. But no. let's, let's... We'll talk later about that. Um, it's impossible. Impossible? It's impossible for me to That's, say that I like this better than, than the other. I think it's like Beatles. I have a favorite Beatle, which was George. Mm-hmm. but I don't have a favorite album of the Beatles. I can tell you for sure it's Revolver. Well, it's one, one of for sure the best that they did, especially with Tomorrow Never Knows. I mean, that, right. what the hell is. If I try to do, to recreate that thing with all the technology that we have today, I wouldn't be able to do, come close to that. Right. Right, because just like with you, it's pure inspiration. This is not based on any kind of formula. Uh-huh. Da- David, could we uh, keep on this interview a little bit later? Because I'm starving. I didn't eat anything. Uh, look, I'll do whatever is needed for you. I uh, have a job. I'm at my job. I, I start working in an hour and a half. I don't know how long you need, but uh, sure, I'll accommodate whatever you need. Okay, so what should I do? How long do you need to eat? I don't know. I I need to wake up. I'm still in bed. I didn't even go to pee. (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, you don't have to get out of bed, but uh, you certainly... No, I don't want to pee in my bed. (laughs) You, no, you certainly. I recommend peeing in the toilet and then hanging yeah, out. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a better, be, better <laughs> idea. <laughs> so, do you want to? I don't know. You tell me what you want to do in a perfect world. How would you do it? In a perfect world, I would continue this tomorrow, for example, because today I have rehearsal, and we don't don't play for more than two and a half years. Listen, so, I'll do I'll do whatever it is to. Uh, so to, I I think that to, because I see this is going to be a very long thing, and uh, I'm very glad that we're doing this because it is history. Yeah. And but I need to take care of all those other things that are happening at the same time here. Look, for you to accommodate this, uh, I'll do whatever you want. So just let's keep on doing like daily. You got it. Look, I'm I'm good tomorrow. I wake up in the middle of the night. I can do this whenever you want. The ideal for me would be like 10 a.m. my time here. You got it. I'll see you 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay. I love you, David. Thank I you love so you. much. I love you, too. I'm having a blast, and I want to keep it that way for you. And then we'll, uh, you know, we'll go, we'll have some fun with this tomorrow. 
Okay, man. So I'm so sorry, but you know, I need to do those other things. No, no, no. You don't, you don't owe me an apology. Look, here's the thing. Uh, Aaron told me that I had an hour and I only had my fingers crossed that I could trick you into staying on for a long time with me. I'm glad I didn't have to trick you. <laughs> no, it was cool. This is going to be amazing. If it's two, three, four, however many episodes it is, uh, that's what we'll do. So if it's uh, Mutantis month, It'll be Mutantis month. Wow. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, man. All right. That just about does it. A heartfelt discography to thanks goes out to our graphic designer, Todd Zimmer, my beautiful wife and son, Jen and Mason, Sergio Diaz, my incredibly loyal fans, and especially the entire Patreon community, the soldiers of sound. I love every last one of you, and this show would not exist without you. But wait just a minute. This is just the entrance to the rabbit hole. No need to stop now, because we're on a roll. Join us as we descend down, down, down on this South American psych deep dive. Another way to dive even deeper is to get thee directly to last week's Sergio Diaz Part 1, which is Episode 86. Of course, if you're subscribing to our Patreon, then you already know to keep your ears peeled throughout the week, because this Monday continues the Os Mutantes love with our Patreon-only wildcard episode, the Os Mutantes Buyer's Guide, a Cliff Note-style star rating-packed overview of the entire output of the band to make up for the fact that Sergio left me in the lurch. Not to mention Wednesday's incredible Patreon-only episode of Discographies The Private Press with Paul Major, wherein we'll be covering Los Vidrios Quebrados Fictions LP, a 1967 Chilean psych gem. That's patreon.com slash discograffiti. This is an entirely listener-supported show, and I offer a full, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. So if you dug this episode, you don't have an excuse. Check it out right this second. Thank you so much in advance. And be sure to mark your calendars, because next Friday, April 14th, we're coming at you with a truly soul-bearing interview with Randy Randall from the incredible group No Age. And so, from now till then, don't let our youth go to waste, lads and ladies. It's Discograffiti. Discograffiti.